Hi all, today we are going to discuss about protection of bus bars. So the bus bars plays a very important role since they form the vital part of the power systems because they are used for interconnecting two different systems and if a fault develops in this part, it leads to a huge damage. So the different types of protections that are used for bus bars will be the differential protection as well as the frame leakage protection. So let us see each one of them in detail now. So first we will start with the differential current protection. So the operating principle is based on the KCL only that is the current entering is equal to current leaving. So let us take the example I am taking the case of a bus bar. So you have to remember that whenever I tell the bus bar protection that includes the protection of your bus bar, your circuit breaker as well as your isolators. So the, all these parts comes under the protection of the bus bar only. So I am taking a bus bar. For this bus bar, let us assume there are two incoming lines and three outgoing lines are there because we know that whatever current is entered from these two inputs that should leave from these three out. So you agree with me? So now if the fault happens in the external side, your relay should not operate and your relay should operate if any fault happens in the protected zone. That means either the fault happens at your circuit breaker or your bus bar or your isolator, then your relay should operate and disconnect your circuit breakers on both the sides. So how this will operate? So let us try to see now. So now I am taking the case of some external fault, some fault has happened here, ground fault. So whenever the fault happens here, so this fault current will pass through this CT as well as these currents are supplied by these incoming CTs. Agree with me? That means whatever the power is required for this fault that is supplied by both the incoming as well as the outgoing CTs or otherwise we can tell that whenever the fault happens, the current entering in this protected zone will be equal to current leaving the protected zone. Let us assume because of this fault current, the current supplied by the CTs, the current, the primary current I am referred to the secondary side. Let us take the dot notation like this. So similar way the current is produced by this one also. So this current plus current produced by this one, the sum of the current will come like this. So this current will reach here, the same current will pass like this. And because the current produced by these CTs will be like this. You agree with me? So this will come like this. It will pass through the CTs depending on how much value of the current is passed and it will return back like this. So we can tell that let us take for example, the current at this point I am representing by I1, the current at this point I am representing by I2 because the value of I1 will be equal to I2 because the current that is supplied is equal to current that is left because this junction is the current left plus current that is entering. So I1 is equal to I2. So automatically the current through your relay will be equal to zero. So let us take this current as current through your relay. So automatically relay will not operate. So let us take the case of internal faults. If some internal fault happens, let us take for example, some fault has happened on the bus bar. If a fault happens on the bus bar, the current that is supplied will be greater than the current that is taken out from here because of the fault on the bus bar. So again, let us try to analyze the currents. The currents or the net sum of the currents that are produced, the sum of these three currents, I am representing this one by some value I2. So this is the value I2. So similarly, the current that is supplied from your source, because I am taking the dot notation again in this direction, the currents will pass like this. So the current that is produced, so this one I am representing by I1. So the same I1 will return back. So whenever the fault happens, the value of I1 is greater than the value of I2. So the current that is passing through your relay will be I1 minus I2 will pass through your relay. So this is passing through your relay. So as your relay current is non-zero, so your relay will operate. I am repeating once again, whenever the fault happens in the inside the zone, inside the protected zone, whether at your circuit breakers or on the bus bar, so in that case, the current entering will not be equal to current leaving, that difference in the current will pass through your relay and your relay will operate. But it is having one major disadvantage, even though the construction is very simple. The disadvantages we have seen in our previous lectures also, no two CTs will have the same characteristics. So because of that disadvantage, so some of the CTs may saturate earlier than the remaining CTs. So because of this, when the external fault happens, which are also called as through faults or the external faults, in that case, different CTs will saturate at a different point. So because of that, even for the external faults, even though the primary currents are same, the secondary currents will not be same. So that leads to operation of your 
relay. So in order to overcome this, either we have to go for the bias differential scheme or we have to go for high impedance relay. So let us now go to the high impedance relay. The high impedance relay is a sensitive DC polarized relay which is connected in series with a tuning circuit. So this tuning circuit will only allow the fundamental component and it doesn't allow the higher order harmonics. Particularly whenever the throw fault comes because of that the CT go to saturation in that the higher order DC and the higher order components will be produced. Those components are not allowed to pass through your relay. That means it will only sense the case of internal faults. It will not sense the external faults or the throw faults. So, and but the disadvantage happens sometimes during the internal faults, some excessive over voltages may be produced. In order to protect your relay from these over voltages, one extra bypassing circuit is provided here, which includes a thyrite in series with high set over current relay. So, let us see the operation of this. So, these are my incoming CTs and these are my outgoing CTs. We know that whenever the external fault happens, so let us assume the fault happens in the external circuit. So, because of that the current is passing in both primary and secondary, but because of difference in CG characteristic, circulating currents will pass in these things. Generally, those circulating currents, only the fundamental components will be allowed to pass through this relay as majority when the CT goes to saturation, majority of the components involves the other harmonic components, they are not allowed to pass through this relay. So, that is why your relay will not operate. You can see this relay is having LC, these are tuned to operate only for fundamental component that means 50 Hz frequency component and this here the bridge circuit is used and the relay is connected here. So, this relay R is a sensitive DC polarized relay. It will operate only for a particular type of polarity or particular type of current. So, now sometimes what happens for the case of internal faults because of the harmonics, because the effect of this L and C, because of this effect of L and C, sometimes high voltages may be induced in this. Because in order to avoid the spoiling of this circuit, so what we do, a thyrite is used here. So, which will operate or which will act as a short circuit for high frequencies and it will act as an open circuit for low frequency components. So, whenever the high frequency component comes, that high frequency components are bypassed through this one. So, they will pass through this high set over current relay and this high set over current relay will operate only for the higher values of the currents. That means, if the fault happens in the external to the circuit, only the difference of the two CT characteristic currents are passing not the complete fault current here, you agree with me, because that current is less. So, this high set current relay is set in such a way, it will only operate for the case of internal faults. For the external faults, because only the difference of current, that means because of the difference in characteristic of CT, only that current is passing for that, this high set over current relay should not operate. I am repeating once again, for the case of internal faults under normal conditions, this sensitive DC polarized relay will operate, which will only sense the fundamental component. So, along with this, the higher order harmonics also will come for the internal as well as external faults. So, whenever the high frequency component comes, this thyrite resistor will act as a short circuit for high frequency components. So, that currents will be bypassed through this high set over current relay. So, if the current that is bypassed through this high set over current relay is more than some threshold, then only it will operate. Generally, the threshold is designed in such a way for the case of external faults, whatever maximum value of the current that can come of higher harmonics. So, it will not operate for that current. It is set for the higher value than that because whenever the fault happens in the internal side, internal to this, then the current that is passing will be far, far higher when compared to the fault that happens in the external side. Because when the fault happens in the external circuit, the current that is passing through this only will be equal to difference of the currents produced in the secondary by these CTs. Because of difference in characteristic, generally that current magnitude is very less. So, your high set relay will not operate. So, in this way, we can protect from mal operation due to the characteristic of your CT. So, practically only this circuit is used in practice. So, next coming to the flame leakage protection. So, this is used for metal clad type switch gear installations. So, what will be done? So, whatever the circuit breaker isolator and circuit uh, isolators are there plus your bus bar. So, they are kept in a metal elements. So, the metal body will be there or mesh will be there on the outer side. So, all those metal bodies or metal framework are connected together to a common point and they are insulated from the ground. That means, even if some leakage happens, that means some of this conductor cut on fall on this body. 
So that will not directly leak to the ground. That is only leaking to your framework because it is isolated from ground. So now this metal work is connected to ground through a ground wire or a earthing wire. So in this earthing wire circuit, we connect a CT to detect the current. That means whenever the current leakage current comes because of some leakage current, so that will be sensed by your CT and your CT will operate frame leakage relay. Your CT will operate frame leakage relay. And sometimes this may mal operate in order to avoid the mal operation due to some small transients or other things. So along with and for the case of even external faults. So one more thing is provided whatever is the incoming transformer is there the star point of that one will be grounded generally. So here also one more CT is connected that will operate a check relay. So only if your frame leakage relay and the check relay both operate only in that case your relay will activate and your relay will trip the, all the circuit breakers. So this circuit breakers of A, B, C all the three things will be disconnected only if both the check relay as well as the flame leakage relay will operate. So let us take different cases to analyze this one. So I am taking the case when the fault happened in the external circuit what will happen. So the fault has happened in the external circuit. So whenever the fault happened in the external circuit because it is a ground fault because mainly we are protecting against the ground fault only. So this ground fault will return back through this neutral and coming here. Getting this one. So you can see here this is only sensed by CT2 and not passing through CT1. So for the case of external fault what will happen? Only this CT2, CT2 will operate and that will close your check relay. So for the case of for external faults only CT2 will operate check relay. So this is for the case of external faults. So let us see how it will operate for the case of internal faults. For the case of external faults we conclude that this fault can only return back through the CT2 because the circulating current. So whatever the circulating current is coming because of this fault the current will go like this return back from this ground and it is return back because this transformer is supplying your current agree with me. So this is not going to activate your CT1 so that is why your overall relay that tripping complete tripping relay circuit is not closed so your relay will not operate getting this one. So let us see the case of internal fault. So internal fault means some of this phase wire or a live wire fall on this one. So there is some internal fault. So internal fault I am representing like this. So something has fall on this switch gear framework. So the switch gear framework what happens? The current will leak like this. So in this case the current will leak like this. So this is my fault current. So when it is leaked what happens? It should find some return path for passing. So the return path will be provided by your transformer and it will pass like this. Agree with me? So this is my return path for this one. So for the case of internal faults, internal faults, in the frame, that means frame, it is associated with the frame. So both CT1 and CT2 so will detect operate both relays and hence trip circuit is activated. This is for the case of internal faults. So for internal faults both will operate. So your trip circuit is operated whereas for the case of external faults this trip circuit is not operated. I hope the working of the earth leakage relay or frame leakage relay is completely clear to you and the how the other bus bar protection that means using the current scheme is also clear to you. If you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.